Okay, guys, we're going to be talking about Bright Memory Infinite today because this was a game revealed during the Xbox Series X reveal event. It was the most impressive game I saw in the lineup. Visually, it's a beautiful game, and it seems to be taking a page out of, like, everyone's book. My conclusion, imagine a game that has Titanfall mechanics combined with Sekiro in terms of, like, the grappling effects as well as the abilities you can unlock, but in a Dark Souls setting set in the future. Nothing I said right now makes any sense. I know. The hell is this? But it's dope, baby. Now, this was the opening scene to the reveal, and man, did it amp up. We got to see a number of cool abilities. We got to see wall running, very fluid first-person shooter gameplay, a sword, a couple ads here that look like they're in the wrong time zone, but it's all good. We also saw some cool grappling effects that would pull us, as well as pull enemies to us. And I'm going to be comparing this a bunch to Bright Memory. This is Bright Memory Infinite. This is going to be the actual game, but we've already played the demo to this game called Bright Memory, which is a very basic version that is currently available right now, I think on Steam. I'm not sure if it's available on other platforms, but they've seemed to improve a lot here on what we've seen from Bright Memory. Now, what I was not expecting was for a freaking car to come out of nowhere. So yeah, guys, just prepare yourselves. This game and everything about it is going to be pretty trippy. Now, as far as my understanding, narratively, this game seems to be walking a tightrope between the past and the future. Sci-fi as as well as medieval. At the same time, right down the middle of it is fantasy. Now, the actual Bright Memory demo was a lot of fun, and I mainly just wanted to try it out to see how the mechanics feel. How did the first-person shooter mechanics feel? What were the abilities like? And I was pleasantly surprised. It was only about an hour long, but man, was it chock full of action. Now, this demo actually consists of like some really cool boss fights. One of my favorite boss fights was this right here, which is like a page straight out of Dark Souls. Look at this guy. Look at him. Now, I don't know how many of us have ever wonder what would have been like to bring a gun into Dark Souls. Turns out it's pretty effective. I mean, it's actually pretty effective right here. Had I had a sword and I would have to fight this man melee to melee, he probably would have wrecked me. Fortunately for me here though, I had a lot of abilities unlocked. I was hitting him with some lightning abilities, some AOE light attacks. You even have one ability that you can freeze time. It's crazy. And did I mention you got guns? You got three guns actually. At least in this demo, you got an AR, you got a shotgun and a pistol. Now the ads that you actually face off against range from like enemy soldiers to like basic wolves to undead to like lions with armadillo shells. It gets kind of crazy. Actually, the final boss of this demo doesn't even have a head. It's just called God of War. And maybe there's some lore surrounding it. I have no idea. But it's actually a pretty epic fight. Overall, my experience with the demo was really, really good. I actually ended up playing through it like three or four times. Had a lot of fun, eventually unlocking all of the abilities, which greatly improved the experience. Now, some of the things that I picked up though on in the demo was that there was things like puzzles that you had to figure out whether they were like jumping puzzles where you had to make your way to that middle platform kind of reminded me of uncharted in some ways as well as just like this basic sundial looking thing that was required to unlock these doors so it seems like there is something more to bright memory especially coming with bright memory infinite than just hack and slash it's just not going in there and killing things wrecking house rinse repeat there definitely seems to be a more exploration aspect to it alongside some of these puzzles puzzles, which I really, really like. Now, Bright Memory Infinite, we've seen a few gameplay videos of it, and I gotta say, significantly improved over Bright Memory. Number one, you probably noticed the HUD is completely cleaned up, which I very much like. Number two, some new abilities. I think you might be able to slide in this game, which I thought was really cool. You see this right here, where she goes in for the slide and immediately camos herself when she comes out of her dodge. Another beautiful ability is the way in which you can use your sword. The sword ability in Bright Memory was kind of used more as like an energy sword, right? Like you saw the slash attacks, but you didn't see the physical sword itself making contact. This one actually looks to be used physically. Now the grappling effect, there seems to be more freedom. Just looking at where Sheila here goes to grapple, doesn't seem like there's a specific area. It looks like you can almost grapple anywhere, which makes me wonder if we could do something like, I don't know, like grapple skate across the map or something. And this thing comes out of the sky, this ginormous monster looking thing. Again, another page out of Dark Souls or something. It Sees to show Sheila falling off the map. And you're like, okay, falling. That kind of sucks. Is she going to grapple out of the situation? Airplane. What the hell is this? A freaking airplane. This is why I think there's going to be something trippy happening here with this game, at least narratively, between both the past and the future, or maybe even just the past and the present. But all this stuff is going on, super action-packed. We see a grenade launcher right here, which is absolutely epic. We also see the grapple effect used more offensively here, pulling the target toward us. In bright memory, whenever you 
can actually use the grapple on an enemy, you would just pull yourself toward the target, which a lot of times result in the target just meleeing you. But look at that. Bam, baby. Oh, it looks nasty. And I love that she's got the sword out. And I'm almost certain that she's like using this almost defensively, like she's going to block. But then look at this. She teleports to her own blade. What are we playing Final Fantasy? And next thing you know it, we're in a samurai fight. This has got to be one of the most beautiful, epic looking games I've ever seen. The combination of both samurai fighting, smackdown, ability generating, teleportation, guns, every amazing thing I could ever imagine all in one game. Now there was also like a trailer showcasing, I guess, what the potential narrative is going to be. I'm not even going to pretend to know what the hell is going on. All I know is that the protagonist is Sheila. She's cool. That's you. That's who you play as. But there's also this guy, all right? And at the end of Bright Memory, after beating the entire demo, it shows this guy like landing in the same area that you are through like the same means of teleportation or whatever that portal is. You still never saw his face. Part of me thought he was an enemy coming after Sheila, and maybe he is, but from this trailer at least, he's not friendly with the soldiers, which is a good thing because you're not friendly with the soldiers either. Next, it just shows the high quality effects, which I gotta say are quite amazing. Sheila walking in slow motion. This is one of the few games that I leave on Japanese when I play it. I would highly advise doing that if you decide to play this game. Not saying the voice actors won't do it justice, but there's like an added level of immersion, man, when you keep it in the native tongue, right? Overall, fellas, this game looks super, super impressive. From just seeing the demo and being as impressed as I was with it, the gunplay, the abilities, how much things amp up, especially when you unlock more and more abilities with things like time freeze, the large AOE damage effects, the different weapons, and then seeing just from the trailer what will be added inside of Bright Memory Infinite is crazy looking. Grenade launchers, instant sword teleportation, crazy secure level grappling effects. And I'm sure we're going to have a ton of abilities that just tie directly into the mechanics of all of this to improve on that even more. So guys, try it out for yourself. It is on Steam currently. As far as like what the release date will be for this game, I have no idea, guys. I know it will be present on next-gen consoles, at least on the new Xbox. It will be 60 frames per second slash 4K Ultra HD, you know, all that good stuff, as well as ray tracing. It could very well be, though, like another year until this game actually releases. It still blows my mind, though, that this game is essentially going to be $10, or at least the current version of it, which will allow us for the free upgrade when Bright Memory Infinite launches, is only $10. So that's what's so crazy to me. Hopefully, though, it's not just going to be like a one-hour hack and slash shoot em up kind of game. I want a lot more here, which is why I'm completely okay with paying more. I want a complete game with a huge lineup of levels and bosses, similar to like Dark Souls or Sekiro, hopefully with some in-depth puzzles and such, as well as like just basic exploration, the kind of stuff that will really enrich this game. Overall, the core foundation of the game though is very, very solid. So big shout out again to FYQD Studio. They've done a fantastic job with this and can't wait to see the final product. Fellas and ladies, thank you all for coming and watching. And as always, slap that like button like your mama told you right. Thank you.